choose a differential. to estimate sine of 0 0.1. Sure, why not? Um, so first of all, this could also have been phrased, use a linear approximation. To estimate sine of 0 0.1. And whether we're talking about a differential or a linear approximation, either way, there are always sort of three things that I need if we're trying to estimate something. Somewhere in the problem, I need a function. Somewhere in the problem, I need a nice value. And somewhere in the problem, I generally need the messier value. So if I'm looking at this, my function is certainly sine of x. Now in terms of a nice value and a messy value, my nice value should be something that you could do without a calculator. Meaning I'm looking at zero as being my nice value. And x, that messier value that I'm thinking about here is the 0 0.1. Now the difference between your nice value and your messy value, that's the delta x piece or the dx piece. So that's gonna be 0 0.1. One of the things to keep in mind is the trig only works in radians. So if I say sine of 0 0.1, it is kind of important to know whether that 0 0.1 was like 0 0.1 radians or 0 0.1 degrees. I'm gonna assume the way it's dealt with that we're talking about 0 0.1 radians since calculus works in radians. Um, you might have a problem where like you might have been asked to estimate sine of 30.1 degrees. Well, now we have to do an extra thing to take those degrees and convert them to radians. But generally speaking, if it's phrased like this, we can assume that the 0 0.1 was already in radians. So to use that differential to estimate or to use a linear approximation, I'm kind of going back to we know how to find the equation of a tangent line, and that's all that's happening with a linear approximation. When we're talking about a linear approximation, we can think equation of a tangent line. So I'm like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The thing that we do to sort of frame this as a linear approximation is that these values should come from using the nice number which means this would look like y minus sine of zero is equal to that slope times x minus zero. And we're also going to figure out the slope using the nice number. So all three of these pieces, we should be doing using our nice number, not the messier value. To find that slope, we're doing the same thing that we always do and taking a derivative. Well, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, which means that my slope, where I care about it, I'm not gonna call that m yet. I'm just gonna call that f prime. My slope, where I care about it, would be at, co would be at zero or cosine of zero. And cosine of zero is one. So our linear approximation could look like y minus sine of zero is equal to one times x minus zero. Sine of zero is zero.
which means y is approximately x, really, right? My actual equation of the tangent line would just be y is equal to x. So in terms of what we were trying to approximate, that means that sine of x is approximately equal to x. So sine of 0 0.1 is approximately 0 0.1. Now let's go back and put that into all of the notation of differentials instead of a linear approximation. I don't know which way it was asked in the problem. Um, but as a differential, what we're saying is this part over here, this y minus y1, that's really just a change in y. And that change in y is equal to our derivative because that's how we find the slope. And this x minus x1 is our change in x. Now, our differential, or rather our tangent line equation is not exactly equal to our real equation. So we're gonna swap this out for it's approximately equal. So when we're using differentials to estimate a value, that's really like that linear approximation thing. And we're, when we're using them to estimate a change, that's where we're just very directly using that, that change in y is approximately my derivative times my change in x. When we use them to estimate a value, we kind of have to have whatever our starting y value is and we're adding to that the change in y. So one of the questions from Babson's exam is we've got pressure in a water line, and this is number six from Babson's practice final. By the way, I linked. Um, because Babson's website is fully available to the public, um, I did put a link to his practice final in Canvas. So even if you're not in his class, you can have more problems to work on. So we have been told that the pressure in a line is given by 200 minus 20x plus 2x squared. Um, and X is the miles from a pumping station. I'm just gonna write it as miles from the pump. So the first part of this question asks us to find a linear approximation to the change in pressure half a mile further than four miles. Okay, that is like strangely worded but it's worded strangely to try to fit into this formula for um, a differential. So the key piece here from my perspective, the key word is that we're using a, lim a linear approximation for the change in pressure. And because we're looking for a linear approximation to the change in pressure, we're really looking at this second piece. So we're saying that our change in pressure will be approximately our derivative times our delta x. No matter what we're doing, this derivative should always be at the nice number.
I'm calling it the nice number. In this case, our nice number is four. That delta X is like how much we've moved away from that nice number. So our delta X is that one half. So I'm gonna say that delta P is approximately taking that derivative. So dp dx, derivative of 200, I get zero. There's a negative 20 and plus four x, which means that my dp dx evaluated at x equals four, negative 20 plus 16, I get negative four. So my change in pressure is approximately negative four times our delta X of one half. Or I guess we can actually do that, negative two. So we have about two Pascals of a drop in pressure going from four miles out to four and a half miles out. Yeah. yeah, so if I had instead, and this really like Babson is focused on linear approximations to a change, which I don't think is the case for the other class. So I would have rephrased this question alternate, as an alternate question, right? Um, I could have asked you to estimate the pressure at X equals 4.5. And if I asked you to estimate the pressure at X equals 4.5, now I'm not asking for an estimate of the change, I'm asking for an actual estimate of the pressure. So I would look at this 4.5 and say, okay, my nice number is four and my change is 0.5. So I would go to my linear approximation or my tangent line equation and I'd be thinking about, okay, my pressure at 4.5 is approximately my pressure at four plus my derivative times my delta X of 0.5, which is more how all of the textbook questions are set up. So we'd have to plug four into the original equation. So my pressure at four would look like 200 minus 20 times four plus two times four squared. And then we'd have this dp dx term, which we got to be negative four times that change in x of 0.5. four inches by four inches, but due to variations in the manufacturing process, right, that's really like four inches plus or minus one one hundredth of an inch or four inches plus or minus point zero tenths hundredths, point zero one. Um, So the question is, if we use that, this is a poorly written question and I'm sorry, it's missing information. Um, if we use that measurement, I'm gonna turn it into something we can actually solve. So if we use these dimensions,
to find the area of the tile or of each tile. What is the maximum error? Maximum error in this calculation. And what is the relative error? And essentially, this is the this is that idea of a small discrepancy in one of the dimensions will propagate to any calculation that we make. So if I think about this. If this were like an actual four inch by four inch tile, um, and we were off by 0 0.01 inches in both directions, then our area would be off by like all of this area. So that's what we're talking about when we're thinking about that maximum error that could happen. Well, our error in the area is really just thinking back to, well, okay, let me put it this way. This problem's not so bad. The formula for the area of a square is x squared we could compute the actual bounds on the error here by looking at what would the area be if it were 4.01 times 4.01? And what would the area be if it were at the other extreme, the 3.99 by 3.99? And that would give us the true actual bounds for the error. But typically, our equations are not quite this nice, right? So we're just practicing a skill now for maybe a future application. And if this were way uglier to have to actually plug in gross numbers to, instead of doing that and computing that actual range for the error, we say that our error is gonna be approximately that delta A or back to the same thing we had before, derivative of A times our delta X. So this, this delta X piece, that's our error in measuring X. That does not say measuring, cool. In, So I would be looking at our error estimate is approximately our derivative, which would be 2x, but we're always going to evaluate the derivative at our nice number. So in this case, 4 times our error in measurement over here, which was 1 over 100. So I'm looking at, this should be two times four, that's eight. So eight over a hundred or 0 0.08, if you like. Now in terms of the relative error, we're just taking that and dividing by the thing that we computed. So our relative error in the area would look like the error in the area divided by the area that we would get. So 0 0.08 divided by, and again, we're always using our nice number anytime we're having to use a form, anytime we're referring back to the function. So our area here 
would be looking at a four squared. Cool. Now, sometimes, and just because I know we've seen some slightly different phrasing of things on some of Clayton's other exams relative to the practice exam, let me just write another possible way that this relative error thing could come up. Um, so I'll stick with the tile. I'll stick with the tile for the sec for a second. Um, Another square tile at the factory has been measured to be accurate within 3%. How accurate can the area calculation be? So this phrasing of accuracy is giving us the relative percent error. So what this question is saying is that our relative percent error for the length of the sides of our tile, so our delta x over x is equal to 3%. And then we're being asked for the accuracy in the area calculation. So we're being asked to find delta a over a. Now it might feel like we're missing some information here, but interestingly, we are not. So in order to come up with this, I'm going to start by finding that delta A. And our delta A, again, is going to come from, we're taking our Derivative of A, so I would get 2x for our derivative times delta x. And then I need to divide both sides by A. Well, when I divide over here by A, I'm going to divide by the letter A, but on the right hand side, I'm going to divide by our equation for A. And when I do that, Our equation for a was x squared. So one of these two x's is going to cancel out. And I'm left with 2 times delta x over x, which means I can be accurate. to 